Thank you all. I can uh, honestly say that I traveled halfway around the world to be with you tonight. Um, I won't say that was the only reason I came back, um, but I'm, I'm delighted to have uh, li literally um, just gotten off a plane from uh, India this morning um, and to be able to be here as part of DICE Impact and to uh, to be with you in, in, in a collection of presidents, as, uh, as we just heard. But you know, when I think of uh, Ruth Messenger, uh, long before I came here and long before she was at uh, American Jewish World Service, she knows what I'm going to say, uh, she was my president when I lived in Manhattan. Um, so I've always been comfortable with the idea of a woman president. That wasn't new to me. Um, and Ruth, to have you here at Brandeis uh, sharing with us your extraordinary work is a, is a great gift and a great treat to us. So thank you for, for being with us. Uh, when um, Larry Simon, who's been so instrumental in this and so many other areas as well as his work here, uh, heard himself described as a hidden treasure with characteristic modesty, he said to me, well, uh, hidden maybe, but not a treasure. Um, I guess I have to quibble, my friend, and say a treasure certainly, but never hidden. Uh, but uh, congratulations on, on all that, that you did for American Jewish World Service and what you continue to do here at Brandeis and at the Heller School. And we've got a lot of important work we will do together. But thank you for, for all that you do. And Jules Bernstein and the Legacy Fund, uh, Jules alumnus par excellence, uh, whose involvement in the school takes so many roles. But in addition to the ones we think of tonight, in terms of what the Legacy Fund means to social justice at Brandeis and to all of the work that he supports in a variety of ways, uh, I'm going to seize on one that I know is very special to him that I think is particularly relevant tonight, and that is his unswerving devotion to, I'll say, put the Brandeis in Brandeis. And by the Brandeis in Brandeis, I mean the Louis Brandeis, the Justice Louis Brandeis into Brandeis University. Uh, Louis Brandeis uh, was an extraordinary figure in so many ways, and I don't think he would have used the term social justice exactly to describe what he did. He really would have just called it practicing law. But he thought the obligation of a lawyer took him into the world and required of him to use the skills that he had and the training that he'd received to leave the world a better place than he found it. He did that in his practice. He did that in his extracurricular activities. Um, and he did that as a justice in, in every way. So in many ways, I take great strength and focus as to what we're about here from thinking about what Louis Brandeis would say about our mission and what he would challenge us to do. And the extraordinary range of programs that we have and student groups supporting it was, has been described varyingly, um, variously as the social justice equivalent of the Festival of the Arts. That what the Festival of the Arts is to the creative arts, DICE Impact is to social justice. And I think that's a particularly appropriate connection to make because the truth is, is there is no greater or more significant creative activity or creative art than the very act of creating the world in which we live. And that's where creative arts meets social justice. The fact that repairing the world is a kind of creating the world or recreating the world on a daily basis. And that really is what is at the essence, I think, of the social justice mission that is in the very DNA of Brandeis. The amazing thing is not that the Taekwondo club found social justice in their mission. The amazing thing is that there was nothing amazing about that. That's what you'd expect at Brandeis, uh, because it is so deeply ingrained in the DNA of this institution. Many people see different aspects of Brandeis. I think of it as a, a circle with a single center, and there are many points on the outside, which means different journeys for each of us to that center, and different pieces of the institution we take. In fact, although I've never asked the registrar of this, I'm going to wager that it has never happened that any two students have traveled the exact same path over four years in terms of the exact same courses. And if you throw in extracurricular activities, then it's a no-brainer that no two students have traveled the precise same path. But the one thing you can get a wall-to-wall -wall coalition on that everyone will agree on is that social justice plays a role in what we're about. People will certainly disagree on what social justice means and should. In fact, we might even get into a little bit of that tonight. But the fact is social justice as a core part of our mission, as a key aspect of our very DNA, it seems to me is undeniable. Now, I hope that you will forgive me uh, if, in fact, um, I do not stay with you for the balance of the evening. Um, the fact is I'm not sure what time zone I'm on, um, but I will tell you I think it's morning back in Mumbai where I was 
this morning or last night or whenever it was uh, when I got on an airplane. Um, but I, I will just share with you when I was talking with Dan Terrace, the head of our, um, of our ethics center, as well as, you know, the vice president for global affairs about my remarks tonight, my role here tonight. And I said I've known um, Ruth Messenger since I was, you know, living on the west side of Manhattan years and years ago. Um, her career speaks for itself. The social justice mission of Brandeis speaks for itself. I said, Dan, this will be easy. I can do this in my sleep, and it's a good thing because <laughs> I may have to. Um, so I'm delighted to have been with you uh, this far into the evening. Uh, I know it will be a great evening, and the rest of the events of Bryce Impact will be great. Um, being here is an important part of having that impact. Uh, it's now my pleasure to turn the proceedings over to yet another president, the president of your student union, Herbie Rosen.